So uh, for at least 10 years, I had a crippling phobia of centipedes. And every time I saw one, whether it was in a picture or in person, I would have a full on panic attack. Like I would just go for it, like on the floor crying. Um, and it was so bad, I couldn't even say the word out loud. So whenever I would talk about it, I would just say, I can't say the word out loud, but it starts with a C. And people would be like, wait a second, what are you afraid of? <laughs> um, and I want to specify, <laughs> um, I wasn't afraid of spiders. It wasn't like a fear of bugs. It was specifically centipedes, and I was absolutely terrified of them. Um, and I want everyone to know that a phobia is not just like a small fear of something. It's defined as an extreme or irrational fear. And mine was both extreme and irrational to the point where it it um, allowed me to not do everyday things. Like, for example, um, when I was growing up, if I saw one in my bedroom, I would sleep on the couch for days. There were times when I went to take a shower, I pulled back the shower curtain and saw one, so I just like skipped showering. So that was a cute phase I went through. Um, <laughs> my parents saw my struggle and they, for, one year for Christmas, got me something called a bug zooka. And it was this really long tube, like a vacuum hose, and you would just like point it at a bug and push a button and it would suck up the bug. And then you would take it outside and set the bug free. Well, the first problem with the bug zooka was that it was humane. Um, so, like, as, so as Michael Scott might say, if I was in a room with Hitler and Bin Laden and a centipede and I had a gun with two bullets, I would shoot the centipede twice. So like, I wasn't just going to gently capture it and then set it free in my own backyard. That wasn't going to cut it for me. Um, and the second problem with the bugzooka was that it, even though the hose was four feet long, my body physically wouldn't let me get that close to my biggest fear. So I just never used it. Um, and one day, um, I had to get into my bedroom to get ready for work, and as I went to go into the room, there was one on the floor that was right in front of my bedroom door. I had a panic attack, and then I spent a good 10 minutes just trying to build up the courage to just like step over it. Like I even went into another room and practiced how I was going to step, like <laughs> should I like leap or should I just kind of like tiptoe around it? Because if you've ever seen these things, guys, they are terrifying. <laughs> like they just sit in the same spot forever, and then if you like get too close to one, it just like runs like a cheetah through the Serengeti. Like, what is that? It's so scary. So I just wanted to ensure like I wasn't going to come too close to it. Um, so I was not able to work up the courage I needed. So I did what anyone else probably would have done in that same situation. I called off work and I went outside and I sat on my porch until my dad came home. So, um, but what I did eventually get the courage to do was to seek therapy for this po phobia because it was just getting out of control and I wanted to do something about it. It was embarrassing. Um, but if you guys know anything about psychology, you know that the best way to deal with a phobia is through exposure therapy. And for me, that meant spending one hour per week for several months looking at pictures and videos of centipedes until I was able to see one without like hyperventilating or crying or yelling swear words at my poor therapist. I felt so bad for her. Um, and the worst part was like, after she scared the shit out of me for one hour per week, I had to pay her for that service. Like, I was handing my credit card, like, here you go. Um, and she asked me at the beginning of therapy what my goal was, and I told her my goal wasn't to just be okay with seeing one or being in the same room as one, but I wanted to be able to kill one. Because it, something I learned over the years was that if you see one and you let it go, it's just gonna keep coming back and haunting your dreams forever. So um, I went every week, and it was really hard for me to go and face my fear each week, and. Eventually, I just wanted to give up and look into other options. Like, is there some kind of service dog that would like sense when one is nearby and just do something really cute to distract me? But that doesn't exist, so I persevered. Um, and eventually, I did overcome my phobia, and my therapist and I determined that I didn't need any more sessions. So I stopped going to therapy, but I was a little bit nervous to see what would happen next time I saw one, because it's one thing to become desensitized through pictures and videos, but when I see one in person, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna react. Um, but a few weeks after my final session, I was at home by myself and I saw one on the wall. And I'm happy to report I didn't have a panic attack. I didn't like burn down the house or call 911. I just kind of took a minute to assess how I was feeling and I took a deep breath. And I looked at the centipede and I was like, not today, bitch. And I grabbed the shoe and I just beat the shit out of it. Like, 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 like. Uh, overcome my fear and achieve my goal through therapy, but I also replaced the C word that I could not say with the one I needed all along, which was courage. Oh. <laughs>